Shabbat, happy Shabbat, as we come down to the winding down, the ending time of this Shabbat day. I hate that because I wish it wouldn't I wish this would never end. Oh no. Um we are uh to the to the to the brink of the Sabbath though. Seem like it takes forever to get here, but it go by so fast. Yeah, dude. Alright, um today's class. Is entitled 603 score and 6. 603 score and 6 translates to 666. All right? Um, you want to touch this class? A lot of stuff going on, a lot of current events, a lot of things going on. The prophecy is happening right in front of our faces. You brothers better get ready, repent, and stop playing because the time is at hand. The time is at hand. Back. No, I'm, I'm holding the scriptures. Let's, let's, what we're going to do is we're going to send up the prayers first. We're going to send up the prayers and thank the most high, and then we're going to get into this class, all right? Well, no further ado. So with that, let's face the east and send up prayers to the most high God and thank him for the Sabbath day, all right? So let's get it. Sisters, make sure your heads are covered. Brothers, make sure your heads are uncovered, all right? So let's uh, sit up the this morning. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for your glory, your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Father God, we thank you for waking us up, giving us a chance. To, thank you for calling us. We know that if we endure to the end, those who shall endure to the end shall be saved. But Father God, everybody that's called is not chosen. We just ask that we we will be, will be a part of the number that is chosen to enter into that great gate, the holy Jerusalem, into the kingdom. Father God, give us strength. Gird up the minds of the brothers and the, the Israelites amongst the four corners of the earth. Gird up the minds of the wives and the, the aged women and the younger women that they be in subjection to your word and that they go out and teach and raise up that we may be the nation that thou hast proclaimed for us to be. Father God, we thank you for the prophecies that we see fulfilling in front of our eyes, showing us what, confirming the souls of the prophets that we know for what we know, just confirming to show that this word is a true word. We watching your word manifest before the eyes of the world. And Father God, we thank you that you've chosen and called us into this truth that we may be able to be an instrument to the, to the tools and to the word and to the salvation of our people. Father God, let us be righteous examples. Father God, not only let us be teachers to the people, but let us be profitable to our own selves that we may be called into your name and accounted worthy. Father God, we ask that you raise up the nation of Israel, raise up the prophets, gird them up, keep them safe and sound. Seal the laws within our minds. Let us go out and fulfill thy works. Raise us up to be that great and mighty army that you have proclaimed for us to be and the peculiar people that you have set before us and for this day. Father God, bring down destruction upon the enemies. In your son Christ's name, we thank you for the abundance of all things. In your son Christ's name, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. Amen. 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 And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his what? His, his might. might. What? His might. might. What? His, his might. might. What? His might. What? His might. There's an echo. Mm-hmm. Try to do that. Man. Glory to the Father. Yeah. Officer in here sounding like the voice of many waters. <laughs> he just said the officer. He just said the Lord. <laughs> oh, my God, babe. <laughs> All right. If y'all have uh, not been paying attention, uh, Donald Trump has been being a good old devil. I knew that he would be. He's stirring up all kind of things. It's getting ready to go down, y'all. Oh, you got yourselves girded up and ready to go. If not, you better do it because it's high time. It's high. It's high time. In fact, uh, let's get that real quick. Give me Romans. Uh, what's that? 13, 11, 11, 13? 13, 11. 13, 11. Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. <clears throat> Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. And that, knowing the time, 
that now is that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. It is high time to wake out of sleep. Once again, the example we gave later on the streets today. If you're supposed to be to work at 5 a.m. and you happen to wake up and it's 4.58 a.m., are you late yet? No, you're not late, but common sense tells you, damn, I'm going to be late. When it says it's high time, it's telling you, you're not too late to repent, Israel. It's not too late, but you're running out of time. Common sense telling you, you're basically running out of time. You, you're pretty much done. The, the salvation is nearer than we believe. It's time to come up out of the slumber, walk in the midst of sin, and get into these laws, statutes, and commandments. All right? Um, as y'all know, Trump saw with the North Korea, not China, said, well, hey, they get involved, we get involved. So they say anybody gets something. They fight, we fight. All right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Throw it up. <laughs> All right? So uh, I, I was going, I wanted to go into that prophecy about it, but let's uh, let's deal with the class. Let's just uh, go right to the class. All right? So, um, Today's class. I forget what it's entitled again. Six six six. Translates to six six six, right? All right. So now, when you are uh, going into the six six six, it's something easy to understand. I'm gonna give it to you the same exact way it was taught to me. I'm gonna give it to you the same exact way. I'm not gonna switch up nothing. I'm gonna give it the same exact way. That way it'd be simple and easy to understand. All right. Um. So when you're dealing with six six six, how how must the Bible be read? Precept upon precept, line upon line, very little, very little. Okay, so now watch this. Now, when you're dealing with Hosea, um, when you're dealing with 666, you have to understand in the form which the things were written. Give me Hosea 12 and 10. <clears throat> Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multi <clears throat> and I have multitude. I mean, I'm sorry. I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Use similitudes, meaning comparisons or something similar. So basically, he said he spoke in similitudes. So when you're reading, when you're breaking out six and six, you have to understand that a lot of things are wrote in similitudes. Why? Because remember. This stuff was broken years and years and years and years and years and years ago. They hadn't seen the things that we know today be bombs. They hadn't seen these the great cities and stuff like that. They hadn't seen, they've never seen this type of stuff. They ain't seen all this technology. So they explained it in the best way they can. That is a similar tool. Basically, I'm taking something. It's not what what's going on, but it is very similar to what I'm seeing. In other words. So I'm using something. Dang, remember how I said such such? That's the same name with such such such. That's a similar to. All right. So now let's let's get let's get into it. Let's go to uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. <clears throat> 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. But the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved until until fire against the day of judgment. And perdition of ungodly men. All right, the word perdition means damnation, destruction, or condemnation, um, which is the future state of the wicked. That's why I said reserved unto fire. Reserved unto fire, right? Okay, right. um, first Peter 3. That's what was that? Second yeah. Peter. Second Peter 3 and 7. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. So read that again. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved until fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And perdition of ungodly men. So the earth now is reserved unto fire and ungodly men. Okay, now watch this. Go to 2 Thessalonians. The same scriptures we pour today in uh, the street teaching. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. 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 Come on. For that day shall not come, except there come a, fall, a falling away first. Because you got people like Polite. 
Well, I've been waiting on, uh, I watched my grandmama them waiting on Christ. He died, and now uh, uh, Christ still ain't ever came. Y'all got me expecting to believe in Christ. He, he's, he, he's, he done, he's trying to deceive you. Why? Because Christ moved at his own, most high moved at his pace. Right. The most high moves at his pace. He don't move on our time. So it said, let no man deceive you that that day shall not come. When it says that day, it's talking about the second coming of Christ. Right. It's referring to Christ's return. It says, so that day shall, uh, read that again. <clears throat> let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there be a falling away first. Except there be a falling away first. What is that falling away making reference to? Go back to Luke. Luke chapter 21. Is it 21? About the Israelites. Yeah, Luke 21 and go to verse 24. All right. Luke chapter 21 and verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles. Right. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Right. So until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. we It's really breaking down to you already if you a little bit more advanced. Right. It's breaking down to you what this is going to go into. All right. You know what I'm saying? But it was saying that the falling away was talking about the Israelites. We would have to fall and go into captivity until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. The Gentiles is the other nation. Right. Okay. Now watch this. So now go back to Second Thessalonians two and three. Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse three. Second mm. <laughs> Second Th Thessalonians chapter two verse three. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first. Except the Israelites fall and go into captivity in the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Come on. And that man of sin be revealed. That man of sin be revealed. That man of sin be revealed. That's that Gentiles, his time would run, he would be fulfilled. How would it be fulfilled? When that man of sin is revealed. That man of sin is the same thing as saying the man of perdition. Remember why? Because the man of perdition is ungodly man. That man being revealed is that man of sin. That man of perdition. Who is that that man? Christ, Christianity will lie to you. Christianity will tell you walking around looking for dudes who got 666 rolled on you. <laughs> no, that ain't what the Bible's talking about. That ain't what it's talking about. That man of sin is a multitude of men. As a fact, go to Isaiah 14 and 16 real, real quick. So we can get this man. Isaiah 14 and 16. Thanks. Well, Isaiah chapter 14. And verse 16. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 16. They that see that they that see thee shall never look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? So is that, it one man running around the earth making the earth tremble? Mm -hmm. No, it's talking about a nation of men. Come on. All right. That did shake kingdoms. Is it one man? How do you make? How do you? Come on, read on. All right. That made the world as a will a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof. That opened not the house of his prisoners. All right. So how do you make the earth tremble? Bombs. All right. Is it one man running around bombing the earth? No. Is it one man uh, oppressing all nations? No. No. It's talking about a race of people. All right. A race of men. Right? right, watch this. Go back to Second Thessalonians two and three. And I know he's staying up for a minute. It's you know, just work with me. We don't break it all out. We're gonna break out in a second. Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse three. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That man of sin. What is another way of saying somebody is sin? A, a sinful man. Wicked, right? Bingo, wicked. Give me that. Now, who's the border of wickedness? Malachi one and four. Malachi chapter one and verse four. Malachi chapter one and verse four. Whereas Edom said, "We are impoverished." Edom. What nation is Edom? So called white race. But we will return and build the desolate places. 
Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. The border of wickedness. So 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3 said, he, that wicked man, that wicked man, your so-called neighborhood friendly white man, the right. so-called white man, the one that we know in the Bible as Esau, he has to be revealed. He is the son of perdition. Right. The son of condemnation, destruction, damnation. All right. The future state of the wicked. Right. And when you look up the word perdition, that's the definition. The future state of the wicked. Well, who's the wicked? Esau. Edom. The so-called white man. Right. All right. Watch this. So now, let's speed up. Let's go. Let's get into it. Let's go to Revelations. We're going to Revelations chapter 12. And give me verse 3. Now, some a lot of this, some of this stuff y'all gonna know. But we gotta go through it to make I gotta keep everybody on one point just in case we got people who don't know that's online. Right. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 3. And there appeared a, a great wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns right, and so seven crowns upon his head. It's a great red dragon. What does this great red dragon represent? Esau. Esau, right? He said, um, what brother was red in the Bible? Esau. Esau, Esau. Right. Genesis 25, 25 real quick. I mean, um, <laughs> Genesis chapter 25 and verse 25. All right, so this red dragon represents a man, a brother. This red brother is who? Read it. And the first came out red all over, like in hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. So his brothers, and the first brother came out red like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Let's go back to Revelation 12 and 3. Now, hold on. Because some people may say, no, it said a dragon. It said a dragon. Give me Job uh, 30 and 29 to prove that this dragon is a brother. Job chapter 30 and verse 29. I am a brother to dragons. I am a dr brother to dragons. And a companion to owls. And a companion to owls. What's the attributes of an owl? Always up. No. Sneaky. Sneaky. No, in no, a way, no, no, creepy. Creepy. In a way, think about it like this. Our dragon, I mean, our owls, nighttime people or daytime night. Night. They're, they're, night. Not, they're nocturnal. They're nocturnal. They see through what? Darkness. Darkness, Darkness covers what? Confusion and wickedness. All right. All right. So he says, I'm a companion to owls. I'm a companion to what? People that's in darkness and confusion. Wickedness. Right. All right. So go back to where we was at, Revelation 12 and 3, and read that one more time. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. Seven heads. What does the seven heads represent? The, um, the supreme nations. Uh, Esau, right? Yeah, Esau. Right. So you got uh, Greece, Rome, Spain, France. Germany. Germany. Russia, Great Britain. What's the seventh head? Spain. I just said. What's the what's the last head? The right. No. Oh no no. Of the seven. Great I just what Great Britain. Great Britain. Remember, where did America get its independence from? Great Britain. Britain. Alright, so Great Britain is the seventh head. I'm specifying the seventh head for a reason. Alright? Watch this. So now. We, we, the seventh head represents Great Britain. Out of the seven heads, the seventh head, the last head was Great Britain. Mm -hmm. So now, let's jump forward. Go to Revelation 17, verse 18. I mean, seven, Revelation chapter 17 and verse 8. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 8. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 8. <clears throat> the beast that thou sawest was... And it's not. So that same beast, the beast that you saw, but it's not, meaning it was not in existence yet. This beast that is going into right now. Come on. Read it again on top. All right. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. Shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, meaning Europe, out of Europe. And go into perdition. Go into perdition. Meaning destruction, damnation, or condemnation. Right? So this this next beast that it's talking about, you saw it, 
but it was not in existing yet. Remember, he he said, I saw seven beasts, but now there's another one that, that came up. It said, them. at this time, you saw it, but it was not yet in existence. What nation came up out of the seven heads? What nation came up out of bread? The one that broke from bread. Which is who? Babylon, America. America, right. bingo. All right, so they were, America was not in existence, existence yet when he saw the vision. All right, so we came up out of the bottomless pit, meaning Europe. Why? Because all of them are what? Europeans. All right. All right. Um, you shall go into damnation of, what is it, perdition? Perdition. Perdi remember, that word perdition is going to pay, pay key into this. Who's the son of perdition? Esau. Bingo. All right. So that's you going to perdition, meaning destruction, damnation, condemnation. All right. What do we stop at, eight? No, we still at eight. Go ahead. We can. And they that the well on the earth shall wander, whose names were not written in the book of life from the fountain of the world, from the foundation of the world. Now, that's, uh, where is that? It's still eight. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. All right. So now, um, watch this. Where were we at? We just read eight. Yeah, we just read eight. Jump down to verse 11. Verse 11. And the beast that was and is not even so that same the beast that was that was not meaning that was not in existence yet. Oh, even he is in is the eighth. He is the eighth head. That's America. That's America. All right. Come on. And is of the seven and goeth into perdition. It's still saying the same as that thing. This head is going into perdition. It's going into perdition. Destruction, condemnation, damnation. All right. Perdition is key in this thing. Watch. <laughs> okay. So watch this. Uh, is that the end of it? That was the end of it. Jump down to verse. No, we just, we just went, did 11, right? Yeah, we just did 11. Read it again one more time. All right. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. Goeth into perdition. Now watch this. Go to Romans chapter 9. Basing it up for you real, real quick, and then, you know, I'm going to drop it on you. Romans, chapter 9. Uh, do, just get the context of what this is talking about, because I don't want nobody to get confused with Pharaoh. All right. <clears throat> so, give me verse 13. Romans, chapter 9, <clears throat> and verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So Jacob have you loved, Esau have you hated. So that's the context of what they was talking about. Now jump down to verse 17. Verse 17. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee. So what you have to understand is, when it was going into uh, what it was just talking about, it was that's a similar to. It's using a similar to. It's talking about Esau. But it's making a similarity comparison to how he raised up Pharaoh in Egypt. He said, just like I raised him up, I've risen Esau up to show my might. Um, let's prove, let's get that real, real quick. Uh, get Exodus 7 and 3, just to show that he... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Read on real quick. Read on real, real quick. All right. I'm moving too fast. Read on real quick. Romans 9 and 17. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Because at that time, Christ's name was not declared all through the earth. The Most High name was not declared all throughout the earth. So what he was saying is, I raised you up to a point that only I'm going to be able to destroy you. That's the same thing we read where? In Malachi 1 and 4, when he right. says, they will build up, but I will throw down. He tells you, no, I built you up to a point where nobody else is going to be able to take you down. I'm going to take you down. Why? To show, to, to show my, my power. Right. His might. Right. So now, watch this. Uh, verse, what was that? Verse 18? It was verse 17. Give me verse 18. Verse 18. Therefore hath, I'm sorry. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy. So most I will have mercy on whom he chooses to have mercy on. Come on. And whom he will... In whom he will he harden it. In whom he harden it. Now watch this. Remember, it's a similar to of Esau's uh, Esau's reign right now to uh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh's reign in Egypt. Watch. 
I'm gonna show you. He hardened Pharaoh's heart. Just right. the same way he same way he did his heart, he's mm -hmm. gonna do it with Esau's heart. That's why he said the kingdom, the same way they got the got the uh, rulership, the same way they're gonna have to lose it. Meaning they're not gonna step down the hand to you. No. We're gonna have to beat the brakes off of them and take it from them. Watch this. He hardened, he's gonna harden their heart the same way he did. Let's get that uh, show that he hardened Pharaoh's heart. Go to Exodus 7 and 3 real quick and we're coming back. Exodus chapter, <clears throat> Exodus chapter 7 and verse 3. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. So it's going right into, it's going right into the same thing. When he said, I'm going to harden his heart and then show my signs and wonders in Egypt. Right. Basically, I'm, I'm going to harden his heart so I can, so I can put the one man on. Right. I'm, I'm going to make him, I'm going I'm to make him rebellious and not listen to you when you say God warned him. I'm gonna make him ignore the warnings so I can show put the thump thump on him. Show him because right. why I built him up to show my might. So I'm gonna destroy him to show my might. I lifted him to a point where no other army can take him down. I'm gonna have to do it. And that's how I'm gonna declare my might throughout the earth. Same way I did it with Pharaoh, the same as that way I'm gonna do it with Esau. Right. That's the symbol to me. Alright? So watch this. Let's go back to Romans. And let's pick up from 18. Romans chapter 9 and verse 18. Excuse me. So I'm basing it up. I'm taking you through precepts for a reason. After we leave here, we're going to get right into breaking down of the 6, 6, and the 6. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he, and whom he will he, he harden. Thou wilt say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted this his will? Mm -hmm. All right. Nay, but O man, who who art thou that replies against God? That's, so, that's our people today. Or, or if he loved on this, then why he created all the other nations? Shut up. Who are you to question what the Most High did? Right. Come on. Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it? So can if you making if you forming pots, can the pot turn around and look at you and say, Why you made me? Why you made me like this? <laughs> I want to be like that one. Right. No, you accept the way he was made. <laughs> if you if you're an Israelite, be happy. If you're a heathen, shut up and get ready to serve. Straight <laughs> up. Our people the only ones want to argue with the fact that they're gonna be in the rulership next. What? <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you Esau ain't arguing about being in the rulership. Man, why he didn't? That's our people though. Watch it. Come on. Alright. Why has thou made me thus? Have not the potter have not the Potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. So he made one into honor, meaning the Israelites. He made us a vessel unto honor and the, the another one to what? Dishonor. Dishonor is Esau. He's made for destruction. He's fitted for destruction. Read on. What if God willing to show his wrath? Going right back into the same thing. What if I want to show my wrath? Come on. And to make his power known. And to make the power known. Endureth with much long suffering the vessel of wrath fitted to destruct the vessel of wrath, uh, the, the, like the vessel of wrath fitted to destruction. The vessel, the vessel of wrath fitted for destruction. That's talking about what again? The man of what? Perdition. Perdition. He's fitted for what? Destruction. Bingo. So now, when we get to that point, read verse twenty-three, and we out. Verse twenty-three. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. All right, so and he's going to show. So basically he's telling you, everybody think they know what wrath and destruction is about. I'm going to show you what it's really about. And everybody who think that they know what mercy and glory is about, I'm going to show y'all what mercy and glory is about. Meaning, when I say you Israelites and pull this nation up out of the filth and dumb hole and the captivity y'all in, I'm going to show you what real mercy is. All right. And for Esau, the man who fitted for destruction, you think you know what wrath and terror is? Hmm. And for the wicked Israelites, y'all think y'all know what wrath and terror is? I'm going to show y'all what it's really about. Like. Well, you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I'm going to show you what it is. I'm going to show you how you really do it. <laughs> All right? So, so now, let's get down to it. So with that being said, I went through all these precepts to set something up to show y'all ahead of time. Now we're going to twist it and break this thing down. Here it is. 666. Go to Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 12. Remember I told you, I'm going to give it to you the same as that way it was taught to me. It's going to be easy to understand that way. 
Revelation chapter 6 and verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. He opened the sixth seal. Mm -hmm. and, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as Seth, clock of hair. Mm -hmm. And the moon became as blood. Mm -hmm. This is the day of judgment. Come on. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth. The stars of heaven fell from the earth. Now, if a real star fell and hit the earth, what would happen? We don't. We did. Bingo. So it's not talking about it. It's talking about bombs. It's talking about nuclear bombs. Come on. All right. Even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a as a scroll when it is rolled together. So the scroll is talking about what? That that smoke off the bonfire. Right. And did you ever seen how it make that mushroom cloud? That's right. what it's going into. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Every mountain and island was moved out of its place. So this a direct cut to them people who tell us we supposed to move back to Jerusalem and stuff. Or uh, uh, run back to the, I got to do that my job tomorrow. He's going to run back to Haiti. All right. We're going to see this just told you every island and mountain gonna be moved out of place. These people, you got people building underground bunkers thinking they're gonna get away from the destruction. No. Everybody gonna get some. Well, <laughs> if you ain't keeping commandments, get ready. Get ready. Come on. 15. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich man, and the chief captains, and the mighty man, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountain. That's talking about exactly what I was just talking about, about the underground bunkers. They want to hide themselves under the ground. They think that's going to save them from the damnation. That ain't going to happen. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. Read on. We got to get some. And said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne mm. and from the wrath of the Lamb. In the wrath of the Lamb. Okay, that was the end of this, what verse? 16. Okay, so now hide from the wrath of the lamb. Watch this. So the sixth seal is talking about the wrath of the lamb. Read verse 17. Verse 17. For the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? Who shall be able to stand? So the sixth seal is talking about the vessel of wrath and it's basically bringing us into it's talking about the, the, the returning of Christ and the the, the, the the day of his wrath and the destruction that's coming to Esau in America. So the sixth seal is talking about the destruction of Esau in America. The day of the Lord's wrath. Watch this. Jump over to Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9. We're going to get verse 13. Revelation chapter 9 and verse 13. And the sixth angel sounded and I heard a voice from, from the four horns. From the four horns. Of the golden altar which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, so Luke. The sixth angel, we got the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, sixth trumpet. Come on. Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the four angels were loose which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for a slave, the third part of man. The third part of man represents the son of wicked. The sons of the wicked. The sons of the wicked. The sons of the wicked. All right, so we know that the sixth seal is the destruction of Esau and Amir. Right. The sixth trunk is the slave of the sons of the wicked. The sons of the wicked will be who? You see everybody that's not against the that's not a lot of right. Right. Alright. So <clears throat> but also going into Esau. Mm -hmm. Sons of the week. Sons. Alright. I don't want to confuse you. I don't want to put too much in it. Alright, let's keep going. 17. Uh hold on, where you at? I already read 16. Oh no, 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 I read 15. Come on. Alright. 16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, thousand, and I heard the number of them. So what is he talking about getting ready to go around, going, getting ready to happen amongst the uh, Euphrates? A war. He's talking about a war. He's talking about war. He's talking about war. He's talking about war. Read on. 
And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them having having breastplate of fire. So he's prophesying and seeing World War Three. World War Three. And of Jackson and Brimstone. And the heads of the horse were as the heads of lions. Because they oh, he's saying because they roared. They roared. All right. He's gonna explain what he's talking about in a second. Come on. And out of their mouth issued fire and smoke and brimstone. So this is talking about an actual horse. He's yeah. talking about bones. All right. Nuclear bones. Come on. By these three were the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads and, and with them they do hurt. All right, so now he's explaining a bone. If you really pay attention, he said the tails, he said the hurt is in the mouth, meaning where's the bone at? The bone hits. He said the tail was like a serpent. He's explaining, he's seeing it doing like this. What he's explaining is the force that was used to shoot the bones. Mm, and when they. Like vibration stuff like that. You ain't never seen one? The, uh, the wave. Um, that the bone be making as it's going. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what he's displaying. He I'm seeing it move like a. He's like, what's that? It's a serpent. It's flying, but it's breathing like fire. Yeah, he's. It's, I'm seeing it flying. It's moving like a snake. It got fire coming from it. In the head of it hurts. Meaning, it when it hits, it makes destruction. It's like when he said the power in their mouth. Where is the power of a snake? In his in mouth. His mouth. Yeah. He's striking body. Mm -hmm. But he said this. So he's describing the force that it's shot with, and when it's hitting, it's making mass destruction. He's describing a bomb being, he's describing bombs being shot off. All right. Um, uh, verse 18. Verse 18. By these three were the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouth. Excuse me. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads and with them they do hurt. Come on. 20. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands. They, I mean, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Come on. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. So he's saying after all this destruction and stuff, the men who were left alive still did not yet repent. They did not repent. They did not repent. They did not repent. So the sixth seal is talking about also what? War and destruction. All right. So we got the sixth seal in the sixth trump. Now, jump over to Revelation 16 and verse 12. Revelation chapter 16 and verse 12. Revelation chapter 16 and verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his veil upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up. And the water there was dried up. The water there was dried up. Now, that's heavy. That's heavy. Why? Because, let me take a, a, a chance to get around. I want to show y'all something real, real quick. Let me show y'all something real, real quick. Seeing how we already in the prophecies and these things have already come to pass, I'm going to show you. 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 Read that piece again. All right. And the sixth angel poured out his veil upon the great river Euphrates, and the waters thereof was dried up. And the waters there was dried up. And the waters there was dried up. Now, how many seals is it? Seven. It's only seven seals. All right. So, if... If, if the sixth seal is already fulfilled, come and sister, tell you where we at. We in the seventh seal. We getting ready to enter into what? The seventh. The seventh seal. So how much time do we got to play? Do we have time to play around in America? No, not absolutely not. Absolutely not. Let's see if the uh, rivers done dried up yet. Um, where is that? I want to see if I can find it. Give me a second, y'all. I should have had it pulled up already, but I just got to get it. I want to hear y'all, let y'all hear it from the news. If I said you might not listen to me. Looking 
Four. Oh man, I should have pulled this up earlier. Yeah, this is it. All right, y'all check this out. I want y'all to hear this. Let's go back. I want y'all to hear this real quick. Read that piece again. It reads, Revelation chapter 6 and verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his veil upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up. All right, watch this. All right, happening now, Iraqis fleeing three towns on the banks of the Euphrates River. There are new concerns that the river's water level is so low that ISIS fighters can just walk across and launch attacks. That's it. Hold on. Hold on. How low has the water gotten now? They can just walk across. I, I want you to hear there. it one more time. Watch this. How low has the water gotten again? Now Iraqis fleeing three towns on the banks of the Euphrates River. There are new concerns that the river's water level is so low that ISIS fighters can just walk across and launch attacks. That's after ISIS militants. They shut off the gates of the Ramadi Dam. This new strategy presenting a major security and humanitarian threat. All right. So now, the scriptures has told us that when the sixth, in the sixth vial, that the angel will pour out you pour out his uh, vow upon... Read, read it again, I'm sorry. All right. And the sixth angel poured out his vow upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up. And the water thereof was dried up. The Euphrates River is located in what direction? Or is this way? In the who? And where's the water supposed to go down? You talking about north? Not in the east. In the east. east yeah. In the east. But, yeah, I know. I was just saying. Is in, is located in the east. So now, when we go to Joel, once again, it said that he would gather all nations and deal with and plead with them by the sword and fire. And where? The valley of Jehoshaphat. In the valley of Jehoshaphat, located where? In the east. Okay. I, I'm, that ain't got nothing to do with the class. I just wanted to pull that piece out to show y'all stuff. All right. So now, let's read that one more time. Then we're gonna keep going. Oh man, something just hit my head. And the sixth angel poured out his veil upon the great river. Je oh, man. And the sixth angel poured out his veil upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. That the way of the kings may be prepared. Prepared for what? For war. <laughs> That's what he's telling you that the war is taking place where? In the land where the Euphrates River was at. World War III is going to go down where the Euphrates River was at. Yeah, it, it may be a little scary, but we keep these commandments. We're going to be all right. Oh, yeah. We're going to be all right. We're going to make it. All right. Watch this. Okay, so now. Um, now. I'm going to jump ahead. I'm going to jump ahead. Go to Revelation 13 and 8. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8. I said 8. Yeah. I'm sorry, go to Revelation 13 and 18. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 18. Revelation 13 and 18. Come on. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. Of a man. Yeah, it says, let him count the number of the beast. So now, let me see who is thinking. Let me see who is thinking. 
That's right. That's right. Uh, let me see who can, who's thinking. What does the 666 represent? What is 666 now? This touch. Base. That's overall summary. But what is it? What three did we go through? It's the return of, um, it's World War Six. Mm -hmm. Think about six. it. Six what? Six what? Six what? The first six, six seal. was the seal. Six seal? And the second one was... No. No. Oh, six. Six seal. Mm -hmm. Six trumpet. Six trumpet. Trumpet and then... Um, six. Started with a V. Bell. Bingo. Six, six, six. Six, six seal. Oh, the six trumpet. The six bow. That's what the 666 is talking about. And all three of those sixes that we read about, it, it, it explained what? You said destruction. destruction. Of who? Esau. Right. Esau's destruction. So now, 666 is all talking about what? The destruction of Esau in America. But the whole time, everybody thought it meant hell. Right. 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 So now that we have that understood. For Ooh, Esau, so you saying he know he is destruction comes right. six 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 equals Esau's you know destruction. They read that all our life. Right, right. <laughs> now let's put it all together. Revelations chapter thirteen and verse. Uh, let's see. Let's put it all together. Let's put it all together. No, as a fact, six 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 represents Esau's destruction. He, remember, he's the he's the vessel fitted for destruction. The man that shall go into what? Destruction. The P word? No, perdition. 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 Destruction, remember, destruction means what? Perdition. perdition. I mean, perdition means what? Destruction. destruction, damnation, condemnation. All those things are the same, the same exact thing. That's why I told you perdition going to play a big part in the, to, to, to understanding the 666. That's a fact. Watch this now. Go to uh, so he knows he, he's fitted for destruction. That's the same thing he was saying back where. Go to Psalms one thirty seven, Psalms one thirty seven and verse seven. Psalms chapter one thirty seven and verse seven. Psalms chapter one thirty seven and verse seven. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, "Race it, race it," meaning destroy it, destroy it. And when the Jerusalem was get, getting set, they was the one saying. Uh, destroy and destroy. Yes, yes. That's also known as Armageddon. Yes. Woo. Even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon. Which is who? Esau. Right. Oh, America. Come on. Who ought to be destroyed. Who ought to be what? Destroyed. They are the ones that were fitted and made for what? Destruction. This is the man uh, fitted for that is the son of perdition. He was made for destruction. Remember, he said, uh, uh, "Out of Great Britain, out of the seven head rules the eighth head, and shall go into perdition." It's telling same, same, you the same exact thing. All right, watch this. Um, that was it on that. That was it. Oh, wait, no, nah, that wasn't it. Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. All right, so now. It's the same thing. That's why he said that man of perdition is that man of sin. Remember back in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3, the man of sin be revealed, yeah. the man of perdition. It should not come. The day of the Lord should not come except there be a falling away first and the man of perdition or the man of sin, the man of the wicked be prevailed, revealed first. Right. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Now let's put it all together real, real quick. Let's go to Revelation 13. Revelation 13 and 16. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 16. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand. So it says, he causeth all, he causeth all, he causeth all, both small nation, both great nation, rich nation and poor nation, free nation and bond nation, to receive a mark in their right hand or forehead. Now, that mark is sin. The mark is sin. It's not a chip. A lot of people think it's this little micro game chip they coming out. It's not a chip. The mark is sin. Right. Who is the he? Esau, the man of perdition. He calls it all both small nation. What's a small nation? What they call third world. Third world country. Uh 
a great nation. What's the example? Give me what's the name of a small nation? Something like Iran, Iraq. Also Haiti. Right. right. What's a great nation? The British. And right. who else? Where we at? America. America. And it says poor nation. Who's a poor nation? Haiti. Yeah. Who's a free nation? America. Bingo. Uh, who's a bond nation? <laughs> Stick with the ones we're going with. Yeah, Haiti. America. No. <laughs> He's stupid, Haiti. man. Haiti. Right. All right. So now he said it causes them to all to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. It's to see a mark in their right hand or their forehead. A lot of people think that's a microchip. That's not what the Bible's talking about. You've got to keep the Bible in cultural context. Where in the hell do we ever read in the Bible a man was kicked out of the kingdom? Uh, even, let's go back to Adam time. Was, Arden, was, was, was Adam kicked out of the garden for receiving a chip or was he kicked out of the garden for sin? For sin. For sin. So the mark is sin. Okay, watch this. Let's prove that. It says a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Okay, so now, what's oh. behind your forehead? Oh, I do you go the forehead, you know, your mind, your heart. Right. Bingo. Right hand is what you do. Right. Bingo. Your right hand, you you agree upon no. things with your right hand. You act out, you go into fulfilling the actions of sin with your right hand. Where does the sin first come from? In the thoughts. Oh in your forehead. As a fact, let's prove that. Go to 1 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Um, no, is that 2 Timothy or 4 first? About the country, how they come to see it. Thank you, Marty. Second, right? All right. What is it? 4 and 1? No, no, that's got to be first. Yeah, I'm going to say I'll be saying it. 1 Timothy chapter 4, and start at verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the Spirit speaking speaketh expressly that in the latter times shall some shall depart from the faith. Some shall depart from the faith, meaning some shall depart from Christ. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Doctrines of devils. Remember, the scriptures told us, let no man deceive you. Come on. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. It's, it's still talking about that, that, that wicked man that's fitted for destruction. If some of y'all should depart the faith and leave Christ, giving heed to seducing spirits who speak speaking lies and hypocrisy. How does it speak lies and hypocrisy? I'm going to show you that in a second. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Having your conscience seared. Where's your conscience at? Your mind. In your mind. Having your mind sealed with what? Sin. Right. That's the mark. Okay? It's not talking about somebody. How are you going to push a chip in your forehead? If somebody push a, for, a chip in your brain, what's going to happen to you? You're going to die. You're going to die. So how can it be a microchip that will go in your forehead? That don't make sense. What about people who done lost their right hand? How are they going to get the mark? <laughs> <laughs> hey. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about sin. Mm -hmm. So it says it's sin in their country. Uh, speaking of hypocrisy and lies. Uh, it's going to give you an example of what it's talking about. Read on. Forbidding to marry. The, now it's giving you the the, uh, the similar to of it's comparing it to Christianity. It's comparing right. it to the Catholic Church. Does not the uh, Roman Catholics forbid uh, forbid their priests to marry? Yeah, and the nuns too. Yeah, they forbid their priests to marry. Right, exactly, exactly. I'm gonna pull a scripture to prove that. Uh, so it says, um, it says. Forbidding to marry. The Roman Catholic churches, they uh, forbid their priests and their nuns to marry. Right. What else? And commanding to absta abstain from meat. And they command them from abstaining from meat. On the on something they call Lent or Friday, they right. tell you don't eat no meat, only fish. Right. You can't eat meat, only fish. Come on. Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. What is the truth? Because you know, right. right, but you know, um, we tell we 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 say don't eat pork, don't eat this, don't eat that. Well, you can only the truth is only in the dietary law. You can only find a dietary, dietary law in Leviticus and Deuteronomy, and right. it's telling you not to eat the same as that thing. So we, it's not talking about us. It's talking about <laughs> them who telling you don't eat nothing <clears throat> except fish right. on Lent or Friday, and uh, telling their priests and their nuns not to marry. 
They be sleeping with them anyway. Right. They're wrong. That's that Roman Catholic garbage. All right. So now watch it. Let's go back to uh, Revelation 13 and 16. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 16. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 16. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Right. So you got to receive a mark in your right hand or in your forehead. The mark is sin. Now, let's get something real quick. Because all of a sudden, it, there's going to be a, a chip for sin. But where's the chip at for the people who keep the commandments then? <laughs> it wasn't talking about a, a mark that, that you're going to put in your hand or put in your forehead. No. As a fact, let's get, let's prove it. Watch this. Keeping everything in cultural context. So, give me Exodus 13 and 9. Exodus chapter 13 and verse 9. Exodus chapter 13 and verse 9. So, this is the marks of the righteousness. And it shall, and it shall be for a sign unto thee upon their hand. And for a... Uh, Revelation 13 and 8. Start there. It doesn't sound like it. Miss Revelation 13 and 8. Revelation and read, and read into 9. So Revelation 13 and 8. All right. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose name are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Where you at? You said yeah. Revelation 13 yeah. and 9. Yeah, Exodus. Oh, snap. I'm sorry. So, like you, go back to, I, I don't call Revelation. Oh, you ain't correct me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's where you wanted to go. Oh, right. yeah, I went reading, and I'm like. No, I meant Exodus. Start at Exodus 13 and 8. <laughs> right. Exodus chapter 13 and verse 8. And thou shalt show thy son in that, that day, saying, This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. Come on. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thy thy hand, and for a memorial between thy eyes. That's What's between your eyes? Your brain. brain. Your brain. Your forehead. Come on. That the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand hath the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Is somebody stamping commandments and laws between your eyes? No. Nah. It's not talking about a chip. Watch this. Go to uh, Ezekiel 9 and 4. Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 4. So that mentioned the hand and the forehead. Neither one of us have that mark stamped on our foreheads or in our hands. But it's speaking out of your mouth. The thoughts that speak so much your mouth come between the brain. Right. Come on. Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go throughout the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations. That be done in the midst thereof. Right. Wasn't we just out there today preaching to this sister about big, wearing pants is abomination? Right. Mm -hmm. Why? Why did nothing that come out the sky and stamp me in the forehead? Right. <laughs> why I ain't get a chip stamped into my hand for that? Right. Because it's not talking about a chip. Same thing in Revelations. It's all spiritual. It's a spiritual mark that goes down. The spiritual mark if you keep the commandments, and the spiritual mark if you. Following the wicked, if you keep in sin. Alright? So now, last one. Let's get one for the right hand or whatever. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 18. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand. That they may be as a front, a frontlet between your eyes. Is there anything stamped to your hand? No. Nope. Is the law stamped on your hand? No. Nope. Is it stamped in your forehead nope. between your eyes? Absolutely not. It's in your mind and in your hands. You do the actions of it. All right. So now, let's go back to Revelations. Revelation chapter thirteen and verse. Uh, Let's get another one. Let's go to Revelation 13 and 16 one more time. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, 
rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. In their right hand or in their forehead. So now, what we did was we just did the vice versa part. When we read about the laws and things that's being stamped to us, that was spiritual. It was never an actual mark stamped upon us. It was never nothing came and stamped between your eyes on your forehead. It was nothing stamped to your hand. It was spiritual. In your hands, your right hand, why is it making reference to your right hand? What do you do with your right hand? Make agreements. Shake hands. You make agreements with your right hand. You make oaths. You make oaths. You pledge with your right hand. All those things, those happen with the right hand. It's not talking about, oh, he's going to stick a chip in your right hand. It's not talking about, oh, he's going to stick a chip in your forehead. It's not what it's going into. All right? The mark of the beast is sin. Watch this. Um, no, nah, watch this. Go to 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11. Let's also show that it's what it's talking about with the mind. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 11. And for this cause, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. Where is a delusion? What does a delusion affect? Your mind. It affects your mind. Come on. That they shall believe a lie. That they shall believe a lie. So most I said, okay, you reject this truth. You want to hear my laws and commands? Oh, cool. Now I'm going to deceive you, and you're going to believe a lie. Why is he going to make you believe a lie? Watch this. Read on. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, that, but had pleasure and unrighteousness. But that they might all be damned. Damned is another way of saying damnation, destroyed. He said, you don't want to believe this truth? You don't want to believe my laws? You don't want to do them? Fine. Now I'm going to deceive you, and you're going to be damned because you did not believe the truth. The truth is what? Psalms 119, verse 142, the laws and commandments. All right, watch this. And those that have pleasure. You know that goes back to Romans 1 and 32. Right. Pleasure and sin, in other words. <clears throat> All right. Watch this. Now, you got some people who say, God don't deceive nobody. God won't deceive nobody. He's a lie. <laughs> Watch this. Go to Job 12 and 16. Job chapter 12 and verse 16. Job chapter 12 and verse 16. And, and I'm going to show you how you been, how, how Christianity is deceiving the people with the chips. This is the example. Christianity got people thinking that they can do whatever they want, right? As long as they don't accept the chip, they're going to get into the kingdom. All right. So now it ain't about keeping God's laws no more. It's as long as you don't accept no chip. Meanwhile, your whole life, you living, breaking every law, statute, commandment in the Bible. That's being deceived. And that's that strong delusion that you will actually believe that lie. Sunday, people in the Sunday church really think that they say because they say hallelujah on Sunday. Doing what they want to do, and because I dropped $20 in your offering plate, I done washed away my sins. Or he done dipped me in some lukewarm water. Man, that thing was cold. What? <laughs> he done dipped me in some water and told me God is good. Now I'm saved. That one video still killed me. I don't mind Went in the wet crackhead right. and came out of wet crackhead. Right, that's exactly. <laughs> that's all it is. You get dipped in water now. You think you say you you went in a drop. You went in the devil. Came out of wet devil. That's it. <laughs> that boy jumped out and hit that water. Come on, woo! <laughs> <laughs> that video made me laugh, man. All right, all right. Give me that. Job twelve and sixteen, real quick. Job chapter twelve and verse sixteen. With him is strength and wisdom. With him, meaning with God, there is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. The deceived and the deceit, the, the the deceived and the deceivers are his. Meaning, I used him to deceive you. And those who are deceived, I'm the one who sent the deceiving to you, for you to be deceived. Why? Because you did what? Thessalonians two and eleven said you rejected the truth. You didn't want to hear it. So now, Revelation thirteen and verse seventeen. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 17. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 17. Start at 16 so we can get through. All right. Verse 16. And he causes all, both great, I'm sorry, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and blind, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell. Say he that had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay, so it says, said he. That's that he again is what? Is what man? The man of perdition. And that man of perdition is who? Esau. Bingo. So it says, he said no man would be able to buy, sell, or buy or sell. Um, said he that had the mark, the mark is the sin. And uh, 
the mark is sin, and the name of the beast. What's the name of this beast? Revelation 17 and 5. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 5. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. The name of this beast is Babylon the Great. Going into what place? Right here in America. America. All right. Watch this. Um, to prove that, go verse 18. Let's prove this in America. Verse 18. No, that's what we have. Oh, you said go to verse where? We read 17 and 5, right? Yeah. Uh, go to uh, verse 18. All right. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 18. Oh, here's how much more. Yeah. And the woman, and the woman which thou sawest is the great city, which reigneth over the Kings of the earth. Is America not running over all the kings of the earth? Oh, yeah. Does America not rule all the nations of the earth? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, as a fact, you can prove that. <clears throat> Remember, the harlot that dwelleth upon many waters. Right. Is America not in everybody's land? Yes. All right. So it's telling you that the great mystery Babylon is the name of this beast. All right. So now let's go back to Revelation uh, 7. What was that? Revelation 13 and 17. Uh, 13 and 18. That's what we have? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, do 17 again. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 17. For God hath put in... 13. 13. Oh, okay, okay. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell. What's a, what's another word for buy or sell is what? Save. Save. Trade. Or trade. trade. I'm tripping. Another word for buy or sell is trade. Remember, in all the countries, what do they do? They trade. He's saying you will not be able to buy or sell, or you will not be able to buy or sell. It wasn't just talking about trade. You would not be able to trade except you had the mark. What do you mean have the mark? Meaning you in the cahoots with America. You want to miss the sin, or you agree with their policies. All right, watch this. What would they be? What, what, what would they be trading? Because a lot of people now think that, oh, I ain't gonna be able to go in the store and get a candy bar. If I don't get a chip, I can't get a candy bar. That ain't what that's going into. <coughs> Salafi, Salafi. You will not be able to get. They will not be able to trade. What would they be selling, buying, and trading? Go to Revelation. So remember, we did this club. Everything we've done in the past, it all links back up. All right. Come back. Let's go to Revelation 18 and 11. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 11. To show what they would be trading. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Come on. The merchandise of gold. So gold. And silver. Silver. And precious stone. Come on. And of pearls. And fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thion, wood and all manner, manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and brass and iron and marble Come on. and cinnamon and odors and, oint and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horse and, sh and chariots and slaves. And souls of men. So that wasn't going into you not gonna be able to buy chicken wings and Damn. chips and stuff. That wasn't going into that. It was talking. This was a whole nother level. Sex, ladies, all that. A whole nother level. This is talking about trading amongst countries. All right. Uh, verse. Verse seventeen. One more time and read verse eighteen. Revelation thirteen. Yeah. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. It it is, hold on. Hold on. I don't want y'all to miss that. Read 18 again. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count. So he here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. What is this number of the beast again? Read it again. For it is the number of a man. It's the number of what? A man. It's telling you what the mark of the beast is. 
It's telling you what it is. It's the number of what? A man. What man? The man of prediction. Hmm. Come on. And his number is 603 scores and six. That is telling you what the 666 is. 666 is the number of a man. 666 is the number of a man. What does that number represent again? 666. Represent what? Destruction. Destruction. Destruction and prediction of Esau. Right? So now, that's exactly what it was going to. 666 is talking about the destruction of Esau, the destruction of America, and the destruction of that man. The mark of the beast wasn't talking about a chip. It was talking about those who took that mark, meaning sin. Made the agreement. Bingo. They took the mark. All right? So now, with that, that's the breaking down of 666. The six seal, six trumpet, six vow, going all into the destruction of Esau. Now, when we read in the sixth vow, that was the last thing to be broken. It said that what would happen? The Euphrates River would be dried up. Did we not just hear them broadcasting on news the day the day yeah, Euphrates River done dried so far down to now they can walk across it and lunch mirrors uh uh attacks? Yeah. We in the last days. The time you don't have much time to get it together. And then we had uh Trump get into it with uh North North Korea. North Korea. North Korea. I'm gonna show you something about that Mark of the Beast about how he said that they would not be able to sell, trade, or buy unless uh they took the mark. He offered up eight sanctions. He put eight sanctions against North Korea. You know what sanctions do? They stop you from buying or selling. They stop you from trading. So we watching a prophecy fulfilled right in front of our eyes. And then what happened? China said what? Hmm. What China said? Somebody, nobody, ain't nobody been watching me? If they buff, we buff. That's right. China said if, if, if it's going down, then get what? We want some too. I'm on my cousin's side. That's right. It's all in the, it's all in the prophecy. It's more like they get, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's all in the prophecy. You know what I'm saying? Um, matter of fact, watch this. Go to uh, Second Ezra chapter fifteen. Second Ezra chapter fifteen. You can get verse twenty-eight. Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 28. Now, for y'all who know the 66 class, the 66 class is over. I just want to touch this to show y'all what's really going down right now. Behold, an horrible vision, and the appearances thereof from the east. Mm -hmm. What's supposed to go down in the east? War. War. You pray these rivers dry up, and now war is time to take place. Destruction is on the way. The time is up. The time is up. Christ is waiting for the. the perfect time. Go ahead. Bring the judgment now. Watch this. Come on. Were the nations of the dragons of Arabia. The nations of the dragons of Arabia. Who also represents the dragon? Arab. Oh, man. Esau. I'm telling you. No. Mm. No. Esau is a brother that was similar to, to a dragon. But what nation? The Islam. No. Oh, China. 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 Oh, yeah, man. Because they got the... Come you on. Know, they got... They even have days the with the dragon. Right. Dragon. Right. right. China hey, is the right. nation that is similar to it by the dragon. Come on. Hold on. Now, hold on. Now, I'm showing y'all this for a reason. The war supposed to go down in the east. Mm -hmm. That's all in the similitude of China fighting, fighting, right? North Korea was at war, uh, is in a, a heavy, intense, I'm about to spark my nuclear bomb war with Donald Trump right now. Trump. Said, oh yeah, we're gonna meet y'all with a lot of fire and fury. China said, okay, <laughs> pop off then, because we coming in too. China represent is represented by what? The dragon. We read it right here. Read on. And the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth, that all they which hear them may fear and tremble. Mm, come on. Also, as the Carmanians rage and wrath shall go forth as forth as the wild boars of the wood. And with the great power shall they come and join battle with them, and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. And, and remember, Assyria is where? In the east. Right, Middle East. It's telling you, when the war pop off, nations from all over is going to come and get involved. Remember, all these nations got to come against who? America. Right. And remember, he said, I'm going to fight. I'm gonna, this thing is going to be torn down from the 
inside. This thing is going to be tore down from the inside. Trump's so stupid while he challenging everybody. What America? What is America known as? The Great Melting Pot. Why? Because it got all religions and all nationalities of people mixed in it. And he's trying to make it mesh, but it ain't going to mix. It ain't going to mix. So watch this. Um, watch this. Read on. And then, and then shall the dragons have the upper hand. Then the dragons shall have the upper hand. Hmm. That's what we, I tell you, it's going to go down. You better get ready. You better get ready. You better get ready. <laughs> Come on. Remembering their nature. And if they shall turn themselves, conspiring together in great power to persecute them, then these shall be troubled and keep silence through, through their power and shall flee. And from the land of the Assyrians shall the enemy besiege them and consume some of them. And then their host shall be fear and dread and strife among the, their kings. Excuse me. Uh, where, where you at? 33. Okay, watch this. Now, remember, I was telling you, this is the melting pot. You got all nations and stuff mixed up in it. Trump, America's going to get eaten up from the inside. As well as when these nations come together, the remnants of those nations are in America. They're going to destroy America from the inside. Watch this. Go to uh, Isaiah real, real quick. No, not Isaiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 51 and 13. Sorry, 13. Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 13. I'm just showing y'all prophecy of what's happening right right now. What's going to go down? This, this, all, this is, all this is by design. You, you was beating with North Korea and not China say we ready. Once China get involved, who else going to come in? Russia. Russia gonna come in, then who else yeah. gonna come in? Oh, all right. Think about it. Look, at, look at the faces of the Mongolians. Yeah, Vietnamese. Who, who still ain't been mentioned yet? Japan. Who? I was Japan. thinking about Japan the whole time. What you got? I'm saying Vietnamese don't get involved. Oh, it's going down. See what I'm saying? All of them are Mongolian people. They coming together. Malaysia. Uh, Syria gonna come in. Iran. Oh, we got one. You know what I'm America's already pretty much destroyed. They just don't know it yet. Right. Watch this. Because in the midst of America, gonna be, they don't be doing anything, but Christ going to come in. It's time to lay it all down. I'm pleading with all flesh. That's what Joe, that's what uh, Joel is talking about. Christ is coming back to plead with all the asses. Everybody going to get some. Mm. Watch this. So this is to touch the melting pot. This is to touch how all the nations are in the midst right now. Hit the one of what? Start at 13. Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 13. O thou that dwellest upon many waters. America. Abundant in treasures. So when it says it dwelleth upon many waters, it's saying America's in everybody's land. Come on. Thy end is come. Your end has come. America, your end has come. Watch this. And the measure and the measure of thy covetousness, the Lord of hosts has, stone, has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with, with men. As with as with caterpillar. Men of caterpillar. Now he says of men of caterpillar. What does caterpillars do? Squirm. No, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna just give it to you. How do they eat? You've never noticed when a caterpillar go up a plant, he goes to the center of the plant or in the center of a leaf. Yeah. And what does he do to that leaf? He eat it. He eat the, through from it. The, from the middle of it. He eat it. There's a big hole in it. He bites the through the hole of it. He bites through the middle of it. To what are the main veins at, and he sucks all the nutrients out of that plant, and that plant dies and withers over. He the most I said, I'm gonna fill America with men of caterpillar, meaning they're gonna get into America and they're gonna suck all the nutrients. Basically, I'm gonna kill you from the inside. Mm -hmm. That's your now nah, remember, you got all nations in there. He ain't thinking about well, damn, you beeping with the Chinese man. Well, who's it on every corner selling chicken and fried rice? You beeping with the egg wraps, well, who's it driving all your cabs in, in, in front of the, in, 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 uh, corner stores. and running all the corner stores? Your Allah Akbar's blue is going down. And he's telling you, America, y'all y'all time is at hand. It's over with. Hope you had a fun reign, Mr. White Man, so-called white man, but we got next. It's time for America to go bye-bye. The prophecies is coming to play. Y'all better, y'all better uh, get it together. Stop playing, cause most is not playing. It is time for destruction at hand. So with that.
Happy Sabbath. Hmm? 26. Mm -hmm. 26. Matthew. Oh, Matthew 26. Matthew 26. Oh, Still out. Right. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 6. Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment, and pulled it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? But his ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath brought a good work upon me. For you have the poor always with you, but me you have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. So, Mosiah told us to bring out what this woman did for Christ, preparing him for his burial. Whatever we shall teach this gospel. Whatever we teach the gospel. Showing that you women are important to the truth as well. So, um, with that, I'm going to say shalom. I hope the class is edifying and I hope I made it plain as possible. But glory to the Father. With that, I say shalom. 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 Glory to the Father. Glory. <laughs> oh, glory.